Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, my name is John Cameron. I'm your uh, temporary host for the show tonight. James Just uh, is not here. As you can tell, he has sh a beautiful mane of grayish blonde hair, and I have no mane. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is let my, my, uh, my guest this evening, who uh, has kindly consented to uh, come on the show and share his wisdom. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Introduce himself while I sneeze. Go sure. Ahead. I am Michael Graves, uh, and I'm here uh, with the Libertarian Party of Sacramento. I've recently been elected uh, at large to mm -hmm. the board for the uh, county party. Mm -hmm. And you've been involved in libertarianism officially for how about, long? About two years uh, in an official uh, libertarian party capacity, and I've been an ideological libertarian quite a bit longer, probably about a decade. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before that, I was a you know recovering Republican. Recovering, yeah. I used to used to describe myself as a Goldwater Republican, um, and I don't know if that was an accurate descri description. I'm um, Goldwater was a serious small government Republican. Yeah, you know, yeah. he never got elected to. Uh, to yeah, the, to I made the, me made, presidency, made one mistake, and they ran one really good ad back when course. everybody watched TV and. <laughs> and that the world has been worse ever since. But anyway, um, I've I've never I th I think I'm still uh, registered as Republican, mm. and the reason for that is I want to vote for the uh, thank you the the least of the worst Republicans, i.e., a kind of a Tea Party Republican. Mm -hmm. I I guess. Um, but I don't yeah. know if that maybe maybe there's I should still a few of those guys. maybe I should register as well, you a Democrat, <laughs> you know, know? so I can uh, vote, vote for the the worst of the Democrats. So they, but anyway, well, it's an know, interesting conundrum, you know, those really you know truly small government, you know, Tea Party Liberty Caucus type Republicans. Yeah, there's probably like three or five or eight of them in the entire Congress, and they, I, I don't think they live in your district. No, I think there's 28. That signed uh, Rand Paul's uh, right. attempt to limit the size of government. Twenty-eight. That's senators, or was right. that representatives? Yeah, but that's a people who pretty are pretty good number. That's I a think. nice number. I mean, there's probably a few more than there used to be. That being yeah. said, some of those folks are signing on as sort of like a, an ideological. Mm. You know, of course mm. we're we're for yeah. all these things, and then you know they'll right. just sell you out down the river when the actual vote comes up. We we should cover some topics, but for my my background, I've I've been an objectivist, uh, which I think is kind of a libertarian. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Since I since I read uh, which uh, one? anything by Ayn Rand, uh, so it's been fifty years, I guess. And uh, you know, I've uh, been on the show for it feels like fifty years, but I think it's only <laughs> been about twenty. Um, and I my I write thrillers, uh, and they're uh, they're available at a, at a large online electronic retailer, of the largest of uh, of books, and everything else. Uh, no, who you're and the heroes, about. the heroes in them, a hero and heroine, um, and many other heroes and evil folks. The evil folks are are the either those in government or connive with government, and uh, the heroes are capitalists, and they're. Uh, you know the the reason they triumph is because they're way smarter, uh, and they you know they don't uh, thug people and shoot them and all the rest. Of that. Anyway, I'm rambling, so let's move on to some topics. Okay. And the first one, Canada moves to decriminalize possession of hard drugs. Uh, British right. Columbia. Now they say Canada, and then the article goes on to talk about British Columbia. Mm -hmm. So it's not all of Canada. Sure. It's one. One province uh, in Canada. Big province. Yeah, big. High population. Big, high population. Grow a lot of weed in B.C., folks, let me <laughs> tell you. Uh, and this is a Wired story, which, you know, you know by the, the horribly liberal bias of Wired magazine that they wouldn't know the geography of Canada and know that British Columbia is not all of Canada. But anyway, you want to start off talking about it and what's good about it and what's bad about it? Yeah, I it's think really that this is uh, this is a step to be welcomed, just mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, when we had in the various states in the U.S. And, and certainly in California, you know, we had sort of like a partial, certainly a decriminalization, partial mm -hmm. legalization of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And this is a step in the right direction, even though it's not not perfect and there's still a mm -hmm. lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, the black market's still alive and well because you can't actually 
you know, make money uh, making this stuff, you know, growing in, uh, in California. So there, there's still, you know, it's not full legalization, mm-hmm. which, which I would like to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, kind of moving in the right direction and, you know, let's, let's not, you know, lock people in jail because they, you know, for, for victimless crimes, because mm-hmm. they, they possess some substance that the state said you shouldn't have. Um, so, but yeah, there, there are some issues. Uh, it sounded like, uh, you know, the decriminalizing possession of less than, you know, it was like, I don't know if it was like an ounce and a half no, or some 2.5 2. 2. grams. grams. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is less than a tenth of an ounce. But I think that didn't they, have they already decriminalized weed? These are I don't know. quote unquote hard drugs. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this is this is uh, this yeah. is a good thing because this falls under the same umbrella as all the other substances, which never should have been criminalized to begin with. Mm-hmm. Right. If you want to criminalize something, you criminalize actual crimes with a victim, right? If someone's on PCP and they assault you, assault is already mm-hmm. illegal, right? If you're making yeah. a public disturbance, right? I mean, there's various things you can do, but simply, you know, possessing or doing a substance and you aren't hurting anybody, I don't care how much mm-hmm. of it you have, that's your business. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. yeah, the whole Absolutely. the whole approach has been, been crazy the entire time. Uh, you, know, you want to talk about Republicans, uh, you know, the... Um, in the U.S., the the you know the brunt of the crackdown on you know, the war on drugs, I think, was under Ronald Reagan. Mm. Um, so you know those I guys, their Rich, hands are Richard not clean. Nixon, I think, Nixon was, was the start, and yeah. I think then you had like these mandatory minimums. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and Joe it's, Biden. It's not a. It's, uh, it's just Joe Biden who anti-liberty uh, approach. Who uh, still won't talk about uh, the uh, about legalizing marijuana uh, was. Uh, now he's talking about how, you know, these poor populations in prisons, and he never uses the word victimless crimes, I think, because he can't pronounce it. Um, but uh, he insisted upon uh, the, the laws and the war on drugs being uh, even more harsh than the Republicans who put the laws forth wanted them to be. So, you know, Canada... Yeah, I think he was pretty bad on the drug war when he was, uh, I I think he was in the Senate in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, he, yeah, no, his name's on some of that legislation. Mm -hmm. It's atrocious. But, uh, you know, when you see, you know, if you want to look at the, in the U.S., the part that the the Democrats play on this issue, uh, the Obama administration is instructive because, um, you know, he never got out in front of it and said, no victim, no crime, let's Mm -hmm. let these guys out Mm out of jail. You know, he's happy to have... Uh, votes from you know some of the, the populations that are impacted by these policies, mm-hmm. but he's you know they're not going to mm-hmm. take the political risk and actually do the right thing mm-hmm. uh, and lead on the issue. I have I have a theory. Um, Imagine that I have a theory about something. I have a number of theories. But let's you, you let's do. talk about let's talk about uh, places where decriminalizing uh, drugs has worked and worked very well everywhere. Everywhere they've done it, it's worked and worked very well. Portugal is the right. Portugal. probably the best example. They do it. They've done it in the Czech Republic. They've Amsterdam done it in is Denmark. Sort of, yeah. Um, and and when you look at um, the attempt to decriminalize drugs in this country, what you're going to see is uh, where the money follow the money. So oh, yeah. the the uh-huh. biggest people who lobby against and and give money to uh, to the campaigns of of uh, political figures who fight against the decriminalization of uh, drugs, it's the uh, police officers associations, it's the correction officers, yeah, it's the liquor mm. industry, and it's the pharmaceutical industry. Ugh. Yeah, gross. So uh, what what happened in Portugal? Portugal, uh, I want to go into it a little further because Portugal did something great. Mm. Uh, what if, if you could get a, a cop drunk enough, uh, say a, a, a chief of police, and ask them why they're against legalizing drugs, and if you gave them scoplamine and all the other drugs are supposed to be truth serum, right. they would tell you it's because they wouldn't need nearly as many cops. Um, if drugs were legal... You wouldn't have people breaking into houses to sell stuff to pawn shops so that they could buy way overpriced drugs uh, oh, that you yeah, can grow right. in a ditch. Uh, you wouldn't need uh, uh, prison guards to um, you wouldn't need prison guards to to house and warehouse these people. You wouldn't need uh, lots of attorneys to represent them on both sides. You wouldn't need judges to judge them, and on and on and on and on. Now, what Portugal did before, Portugal had a horrific drug problem. I mean, people were literally dying in the streets, and I don't know why Portugal, but but Mm. it just happened. 
And they um, took a bunch of money, and I'm not saying this is the route. In a perfect libertarian world, they wouldn't need to do this because there wouldn't be any drug laws to start with and we wouldn't have these problems. Mm. And they created a social service network of uh, basically halfway houses and counseling and medical and psychiatric and all the rest of that. And then, as they were ramping these things up, they decriminalized basically all drugs. Now, you can't sell a lot of these things legally, but you can use them legally. I don't know if you can use them in public legally, so there's still lots of laws. And their, their problems just dis-freaking-peered, uh, folks. And so, you know, when we look at that, we say, oh, no, you're asking us to spend more tax dollars on something? No, I, I'm telling you, spend less. And here's where you get the money. If you don't need cops, those pay people are paid a fortune. And they have, they have a retirement benefit that is just, I wish I had that. And I've made good money in my life, folks. I wish I had that kind of retirement. You don't need judges. And they are paid, if they're a federal judge, when they, when they leave their judgeship, they are paid their salary for the rest of their life. So you don't need those. You don't need the prison guards. You don't need the attorneys. Um, you uh, don't need a lot of ex expensive prescription medications because you could grow your own opium and use it. You could grow your own weed, and weed is, for many people, a great painkiller. And on and on and on. The money is there. So you just take it from bucket A, reduce it by probably two-thirds, and put it in bucket B. Yeah, there are and, voluntary solutions. I yeah. mean, there are, there are rehab programs already. Yeah. You know, these, yeah. these could be expanded. I mean, these, these are you know good, good yeah. ways to yeah. treat the problem. I, mean, I always think about this as um, you know, addicts need help. They don't need mm. jail, yeah. right? That's not how you help someone. No, no. Um, but what, who is helped by jail? Uh, cops are employed. Prison guards are employed. Lawyers are employed. Bail bondsmen are, are employed. Yeah, and it's crazy uh, to give someone a, a yeah. criminal record for, for yeah. you know, owning a substance. They didn't hurt anyone. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. The whole approach well, you makes have, no sense. And they get a criminal record because, you know, because dr drugs are illegal. We're going to beat this to death, so I'm going to move on here pretty quick. Drugs are illegal, therefore they're expensive. And the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So people can make very good money from it. And, um, you know, the downside is I might get shot or go to prison. And uh, anyway, I think it's it's a fix whose time has come, but some Republicans are going to have to get on board. And actually, uh, that's what the news media says, but the Democrats are the ones who get the huge, huge campaign contributions from public employee unions. And those public employee unions know that their jobs will disappear if uh, drugs are, are decriminalized in this country. And so it's, it's a conundrum. It's a conundrum. Anyway, we're, we're going on to an area. Uh, our next is a completely different, <laughs> completely different subject. And it's U.S. Chinese government hackers breach telcos to snoop on network traffic. And right. since I read this, and it might as well have been in, in Narnian because I'm not <laughs> technically um, all that savvy. I'm not a digital native. As a matter of fact, I went to school with Abe, and, and you know, by the light of the, the, the fire and the fireplace, we did our siphon on the shovel with a piece of coal. No, that's not what I did. But not, not I, quite did learn, yeah. I did learn math. Uh, I have a nice slide rule at home because I lost my first a slide rule. Oh, oh, that's yeah. quaint. Yeah. Yeah. Quaint. All right, so I want well, you to kind of right, lead right, us the through the technical Young guns, aspects. here we go. Yeah, young I guns. think it's, this is a kind of just a general overview. You know, there's basically reports from from U.S. government agencies, the FBI, and I don't know who, NSA or something. So whether or not, um, let me just interject, whether or not we can believe any of this. Oh, I because always wonder it, because with those Because it's the, the fascist bureau of, what's an AI? Uh, oh, I insanity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, yeah, they... I didn't even know there was a CGI or CS, what is it? It's the... Uh, it's part of Homeland Security, oh, I, a, I don't know. Cyber a cyber something. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've never heard of this, but yeah, it, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, that's that's something to always remember is uh, government agents and government agencies have their own incentives, and so mm. you always got to take what you know their pronouncements with mm. uh, with a grain of salt. Um, you know, certainly could be true in this case. Uh, you know, but but yeah, I mean, the, you know, NSA, you know, has you know the in the interest of their own budget, they're going to want to come out and say you know the. You know, Chinese are coming to get us, and mm -hmm. there's there's you know cyber hacks and all this stuff. Um, but but yeah, certainly could be true. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, basically what they're saying is that they, you know, there's reports from U.S. government agency that uh, there are Chinese state-backed, hack, government-backed hackers who are uh, who have found ways to breach uh, American uh, telecom companies' mm -hmm. um, security systems and kind of, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to siphon So you're not going to go through the technical and, details. Good, because I didn't want my eyes to glaze over I don't over know the that this article went too deep on technical detail. I think they're kind of just yeah. saying what the NSA and FBI are saying, and I don't know, you know, they're... Well, it's kind of like through, I said, they, they, they put out these reports and they're not super substantiated. Yeah. They're not easy to substantiate mm -hmm. in the first place yeah. either. Yeah, because if they were, the people uh, running the security at all these telcos. <laughs> See, but the thing about it is, is that the telco companies themselves uh, have some pretty smart freaking people working for them. Of course. Them. And their interest in, I think they're legally required to keep uh, their users' data safe. And information safe. Right. So, um, you know, the idea that they're letting these people do this, maybe they're not letting them, and maybe they're brilliant. But see, to me, there's another conundrum. And that is, if brilliant capitalists, these are quasi-monopolies, so maybe they don't employ the <laughs> most brilliant capitalists, and, and programmers and hackers that work in private industry are not spotting these government-enabled hackers from China then how the idiots that work for the government ever spotted it, I'll never know. Um, so, <laughs> it, yeah, um, it, you know, there's yeah. there's real security breaches, you know. Um, this is kind of, you know, Chinese government does it. We know that they're mm -hmm. interested in doing this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the 2016 election, we had all that stuff about, you know, Russian hackers, and everybody says, well, where's the evidence that this actually happened? But, you know, um, we wouldn't be surprised if it did, because, mm -hmm. like, you know, what, what exactly is surprising about, you know, the Russian government, you know, having spies and, and mm -hmm. you know, trying to, collect data through illicit means. That's not mm -hmm. new. And uh, and the U.S. government does it too, right? Oh, when we well, had the, the U.S. Uh, government, we've had, we've talked on this show of probably, in my recent memory, about every show or every other show, we talk about a government agency, CIA, NSA, right. FBI, patently violating uh, constitutional pro pro prohibitions, the laws of the land, recent legislation, old leg legislation, uh, and and collecting as much data as they can get their scummy little hands on. So, uh, yeah, they're doing it, and we're doing it, and anybody that thinks, uh, you know, I, I'm quite frankly more worried about my government that's supposed to protect me snooping on me than I am worried about the Chinese government snooping on me because all they're going to find out is that I... I uh, research a whole lot of crazy stuff for my books, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then, you know, my financial stuff, I mean, it'd be pretty hard for them to, uh, to do the, anything um, to it, because the financial institutions in this country, the, you know, the places where you park your 401k money and banks are pretty good at keeping anybody yeah. but their own employees from stealing money. They're relatively yeah. secure as yeah. far as at least yeah. keeping records and things yeah. like yeah. that. Sometimes yeah. there's some pretty big thefts. Yeah. And but, hospitals um, are also very, very good at it. Yeah. The yeah. Um, the example I think of when I think of uh, my go-to for the you know U.S. government hackers and um, you know kind of illicit activities having to do with computers uh, is I don't know if you remember this thing, John, where they um, they kind of like put a worm in these uh, computers relating to the Iranian. Uh, nuclear oh, enrichment, yeah. you remember that? And then they and kind they of spiraled out of control the, and melted them down. Yeah, they, they, and this the is Israelis supposed to be. Did do that or did we do that? I think it was US backed. I think it was the Obama administration explicitly. I think they even took credit. Uh, I thought the Israelis was, did. It. They may now, have been involved, I don't recall. Yeah, but if, it, if you would tell me that they're spying but on everybody, I'd believe them because there's some smart well, they, folks. Yeah, yeah. it just. Um, it, it's something to think about. It's you know, it's like okay, they do it and we do it, and they're yeah. supposed to be uniquely evil, but we admit that we're doing this. It's just we think mm -hmm. they're the bad guys, so it's okay if we do it to them. Yeah. Um, and then you know, and we go and melt down their reactor, and okay, I mean, maybe there's you know, I I, I take what the Iranian government says with a grain of salt too. So maybe maybe mm -hmm. there's a nuclear threat there of some kind. I I'm pretty no, skeptical. There, yeah, there's pretty skeptical. No, but, there is. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. There's uh, there's concerns, but yeah. you know, uh, but they're also kind of saying, well, look, we have this like right to. You know, enrich uranium. That's sort of there's mm -hmm. there's a international mm -hmm. you know sort of recognized right that you know they're allowed to generate mm -hmm. nuclear energy peacefully, mm -hmm. same as anybody else. And they're mm -hmm. saying we we just want to you know do that. Yeah. And um, anyway, you know, I think of this from a libertarian perspective as you know our gang, you know, of computer hackers, you know, getting in a fight with them, and then mm -hmm. this gang is attacking us, and it's you know. No. Um, 
problem is there's too many gangs out there, folks. And uh, they're, they're all... Uh, but when it's government gangs, you know, if it's the mafia and they come into your restaurant and they say, um, you know, give me 5% of your profits or your place might burn down or your, your right. chef might have a horrible accident and cut off a finger, you know they're going to protect you from the tong and the yakuza and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the people from South America and all the rest of that. But the way the government does it is they, they, when, when one of their gangs, like the FBI, comes in, they don't protect you from the NSA or the CIA. They just kind of feed on you until you're left lifeless there and bloodless. All right. Yeah, so the mafia you, charges yeah, less too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Way less. Way less. If 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 taxes were what the mafia took off the top, we wouldn't even complain about taxes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's because they're a much more efficient operation. Exactly. So now yeah. we're gonna we're gonna jump into a little more active violence and mm. perceptions of violence, especially. And this is gonna get fun, folks. Um, yeah. It's gonna get a lot of fun, and we're gonna talk about <clears throat> this idea. Is it true that the AR-15 a popular firearm owned by millions of Americans is a unique threat to public safety. And I'm going to start off with some stuff, and you're going to jump in. Right. And this is from uh, fee.org, which is another wonderful organization. Reason's a great one. Fee's a great one. Pacific Legal Foundation's a great one. They, they defend people directly and establish precedents that protect us all. I think that's Foundation but for Economic Education. Economic Fee. Education. Yeah, and they have uh, some wonderful primers or primers on economics that I think everybody should read. So here's the facts. Um, you know, we're, and, and here's my theory. The, the uh, President Biden says that the Air 15, and he jumbles together sporting rifles with, with uh, you know, semi-automatic weapons and automatic with semi-automatic, and, and I think there's a reason he jumbles it together, but I don't want to insult him anymore. I think I'm at my limit. Um, and calls uh, them weapons of war. And then they throw out this thing that the Second Amendment never, you know, had the idea that, that people could have, uh, you know, these weapons for, for, for hunting and for uh, self-defense that our, that our founders had. No, the weapons that our founders had were, were the most sophisticated weaponry they could get their hands on. And they could own cannons, by the way. And these weapons, everyone knew, were to keep the next King George off their back because they weren't at all certain that this experiment in democracy was going to work. And we can see by the Gestapo running rampant in the streets in this country, in many cases it hasn't worked. So the AR-15 is basically just a platform. You know, it's like, uh, what's a good analogy? Uh, you know, if anybody here watches stock car races, hmm. those cars aren't stock. Those cars put out 12,000 horsepower or some crazy stuff like that, and they run at 200 miles an hour this far from each other, and they're Camrays, uh, or, or Malibus, or whatever. Mm. So the, the AR-15 is basically the Camry or the Malibu, and you can turn it into, not even close to being a stock car, but you can, you can modify it and make it fully automatic, and, and you could put a bigger gas tank on it, a bigger magazine, to make it go further and all the rest of that. But, you know, you could achieve the same amount of fire by just stopping at gas stations over and over again. So it's, it's a crazy con conflating, putting together facts and mm -hmm. coming up with this unique threat. Now, here's, here's the numbers, and I'm going to turn it over to you for yeah. a while. Uh -huh. um, the number of people killed over the last, is it 20 years or 10 years? Do you remember? I think it was 20. 20 years by rifles is one-tenth, and this is all rifles, not just so-called assault weapons, and these weapons are the finest means of home defense you can have, folks, especially when you live on a ranch uh, or, or in a gated community. <laughs> That's a little joke. Um, if, if they, these things are wonderful for defending yourself. Um, and um, um, literally... Um, one-tenth of right. the number of people have been killed by rifles over the last 10 or 20 years. Not assault rifles. 20 years. Rifles. Not all rifles. All rifles. And assault rifles are a very small subset of what they call assault rifles or rifles. Then are killed every year by sharp objects. Sharp objects are broken beer bottles, 
knives, hatchets, ice picks, razors, my wits some days. No, I, I don't kill anybody. So how can these be a unique threat to public safety? I'm going to turn it over to you to throw it around for a while, and then I'll give you my yeah, theory, because yeah. you know I have one. So, you know, as you kind of pointed out, the AR-15... Oh, and we're running on, short on time, is, so we are... Uh, the AR-15 me talking. is popular because it's effective. It's, it's good at doing what a gun should do. That's why people want to use it, which is kind of why it's in the crosshairs. Um, but yes, what this article is kind of pointing out is that there's uh, a very big discrepancy between public perception of what these weapons uh, do and uh, sometimes the, the crimes and horrific misdeeds uh, that they are used for, um, but that they're, they're not alone in this uh, effect. That yeah, there's, there's you know, knife, homicide by knife, the handguns uh, are involved in a, a horrific amount of homicides. Yeah. Uh, and Way more. Yeah, and so, and then, you know, the issue being, now, that this is, this is an emotional issue. We have to acknowledge mm -hmm. this, that um, there is, uh, you know, I, I guess it was recently, uh, was it's this Uvalde, Texas mm -hmm. um, school shooting, and this is mm -hmm. horrific. You know, this, this grabs the headlines, of course, because mm -hmm. if it bleeds, it leads, and I could, you know, I don't like this either. I don't think mm -hmm. you do. I, you know, nobody likes to see okay. children being shot, and, and you know, but uh, the issue then is, uh, there's a, a disconnect between uh, the perceived amount of danger, right? It's kind of like uh, when we had 9-11 and people were kind of saying, oh my goodness, we got to do anything we can to stop you know, the terrorists when statistically your danger from being uh, killed in a terrorist attack is you know, like less than like you know, slipping in your bathroom or something. It's like really no, low. Slipping in your bathroom is deadly, folks. You need to put those little things down on the and so, on your yeah, there's just or and a handle. So, so at the same time as we condemn these shootings, we have to uh, acknowledge that this is not like a leading cause of even homicides, much less death mm -hmm. for Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all. That's all rifles. And the, and here's my quick theory. And we, we had a great topic, but I talk too much, which I have a tendency to do. And we're going to add, we're going to put it in another show. And that's uh, is greedflation causing higher prices. Right. And they made up a term for it. But here's my theory, folks. Uh, the only weapon that's very eff effective against body armor to protect people from uh, thugs uh, wearing uniforms, kicking in their door is something like uh, an AR-15. Yeah, my position it, is that yeah. these types of weapons have a legitimate use. Yeah. Just because they're misused sometimes, you know, if if an AR is used to prevent a home invasion, you know, that doesn't get reported mm. by the mainstream media. I do want to throw in a number. Yeah. I think it's two million times a year armed citizens prevent crime. Two million times a year. Yeah, that gets reported that literally never. Never. That yeah. doesn't mean that they shoot people. It means that they have a weapon and brandish it. Yeah, this needs or to be yell recognized. Out they have a weapon right. That if, or if show this person weapon, doesn't have that yeah. weapon in that situation, yeah. that's not better. You're allowing, mm. uh, you're putting them in a position to be victimized. Mm. And all the crap stuff well, that you read in all the liberal publications. Much as say we don't that, like to think yeah. about it, weaponry has legitimate uses. Yes, it does. It does. And more and more every day, folks. And so on that note, I want to thank you very much for listening to me babble for a while, listening to my guests be intelligent for a little longer, listening to me throw in a couple of things that were okay. And I hope you continue to watch, uh, continue to listen, 